Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, part one of the $1,500 computer build video series. This is the parts list. This is everything I've selected and why for the $1,500 gaming computer that I'm going to be building. There'll be a number of videos in this playlist linked in the video description below. Uh, following this will be the detailed vlog, the why behind all these choices, as well as alternative options. That'll be a much longer video. This will be much shorter. And then there'll be the build video and performance videos to follow. So if you are not subscribed to my channel, please do so by clicking the subscribe button below. It doesn't cost you anything, and it will give you notifications for when future videos come out. The primary focus of this computer is 1440p gaming. Now, it would make an absolutely amazing 1080p gaming machine, but that's not the primary focus. Instead, it's 1440p resolution. Now, as an alternative, triple monitor 1080p gaming would actually work pretty well on this. However, if you're going to do three monitors, I would recommend one change, which is replace the video card with a 1080. In this case, the 1070 would struggle a bit on some titles on three monitors. More about that in the second video. I'm now going to go through each of these items, talk about why I included them and what benefit they provide. Everything you see on this desk will be linked in the video description below to both Amazon and Newegg. I bought everything that you see here from Amazon or Newegg, two awesome stores with awesome computer deals. The prices I'm going to give you here are the regular retail prices. Things do get discounted, so check both Amazon and Newegg's prices because sometimes they have sales and you may want to buy half of the stuff from Amazon and half of it from Newegg to get the very best deals. First things first, our CPU. Intel's i7-7700K, 4-core, 8-thread, up to 4.5 gigahertz, Kaby Lake CPU, the brand new 7th generation processor released in January of 2017. This is the top of the line consumer chip from Intel. They do have bigger, faster chips on their high-end enthusiast lines, but for general consumer applications, this is as good as it gets. It's a $350 CPU, and for a $1,500 gaming machine, there's really nothing else that you should be using. If you build a machine more expensive than this, then you really should be on the high-end enthusiast desktop platform. That's a topic for another time. And if you're building something $1,200 or less, then you'd want to be on an i5, not an i7. But anything in the mid-1500 range, the i7 is where it's at. We will be installing our CPU today on the ASUS Republic of Gamers Strix Z270E gaming motherboard, a $200 motherboard that's top of the line for the Strix series from ASUS. Full featured, I'm going to be doing a complete review of this in a separate video. Link to my other video reviews will be in the video description below. And speaking of other video reviews, most of the items on this desk have had videos done on them. The liquid cooler, the video card, even the power supply have all got videos, all linked in the video description below. So if you want more details on anything, check out the links down below. Now this motherboard has AC Wi-Fi, two M.2 slots, 64 gigs of RAM support, excellent onboard sound, and many, many other features. If you're building a $1,500 machine, this $200 motherboard would make an excellent choice for your build. We will be installing 16 gigabytes of Corsair LPX DDR4 3200 MHz RAM into our motherboard. This is about $100 and it's very, very quick. It is overclocked RAM, however, the motherboard supports it and it will get you some additional speed. 8 gigabytes is too small and even in 2017, for most people, 32 gigabytes is too large. However, because this is two memory sticks and there are four memory slots, you absolutely can upgrade to 32 gigabytes in the future should the need arise by simply buying another one of these kits and adding it to the motherboard to increase it to 32 gigs. For storage, I've selected two drives for this system. The first drive is the Crucial MX300 solid state drive, 525 gigabytes. Use this for your boot drive, use it for your most frequently used programs, install Windows on it, it is crazy wicked fast. $130 will buy you either the M.2 version or the two and a half inch version, you can buy either one. Both will be linked in the description below, but I have used two of these in other builds and I have been very pleased with the performance of this drive. The other drive in the system is Seagate's excellent 2TB 7200 RPM Barracuda hard drive. 
for storing your bulk data, your pictures, your movies, your other files, and for installing larger games that are not going to fit on your SSD, that is an awesome hard drive. Now there are many different hard drives on the market. Make sure that you do not buy a green or bulk data or archive hard drive. Those are designed for just bulk storage of data and not running programs. The Seagate Barracuda is a very, very good drive for $70. For the video card, I have selected the ASUS Republic of Gamers Strix NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070 8GB factory overclock graphics card. Yes, that's a mouthful, but it's an amazing graphics card. For 1440p gaming, the 1070 is the go-to card in my opinion. And this is a great card to put with this motherboard. They match, and ASUS's uh, Aurora software will link the RGB lighting on this motherboard to the RGB lighting on this graphics card so you can set them up to the same either uh, static color or pattern or breathing cycle. That is a nice new feature they've included with their updated motherboards. If you get a Republic of Gamer Strix graphics card and a Republic of Gamer Strix motherboard, they talk to each other so you can make the lighting match in your system, which is really, really nice. Powering this amazing machine is going to be the EVGA Supernova 850 watt B2 bronze 80 plus certified power supply. This power supply is about $80. 850 watts provides all the power, not only for this machine, but also for future upgrades, including if you wanted to add a second graphics card for SLI in the future, you are good to go. Now it does cost a little bit more than the 600 watt or 650 watt versions, but for a few extra dollars now, you've got a power supply that you will never have to upgrade or change even if you upgrade your machine in the future. For the case to install all of this into, I've gone with Corsair's Carbide Spec 01 Mid-Tower Desktop Case. This is a $50 case, and it's an incredible value for that price. It's a premium case at a reasonably budget price. High-end internal components, including toolless drive trays, USB 3 ports. It includes a large side window, mounts for five fans, it includes an LED lit front intake fan. It is a nice, nice case for the price. If you wanna see all the details of that case, check out my review in the video description below. It is a really, really nice case for $50. Coming back around to our CPU, we need a cooler. Corsair's H80i V2 120 millimeter liquid cooler. This is an awesome performing cooler that provides 240 millimeters of cooling in the space of 120 millimeters. This will mount perfectly in the Spec 01 case right in the back for exhausting the heat from our CPU out of the back of the case. $90 gets you a top of the line cooler that will let you overclock your CPU possibly to five gigahertz. So that is all the parts going into this $1,500 1440p gaming build. Following this video is going to be the detailed Y vlog. That video may very well be an hour long, but it's going to be detailing all the alternative options, the reason I made these choices, alternatives you could also choose. That's the deep dive with all the detail. You'll definitely want a cup of coffee for that one. Following that video is going to be the actual build. I'm going to have the camera overhead and I'm going to go through it step by step in great detail. After that will be a number of performance videos on this machine. However, before you rush out to Amazon or Newegg to build this machine, I do want to offer you one additional option. Linked in the video description below will be a link to both Amazon and Newegg to another choice which is to buy a computer rather than build one. I know I just spent all this time telling you about all these wonderful parts and building your own machine, and many of you want to do that, and that's great. Make it your own, customize it, put in excellent RGB lights and make it a beautiful machine. However, not everybody's up for building their own machine, or perhaps after looking at the details of it or watching the build video, you're not excited about building it. Cyberpower PC sells basically this computer for $1,500. Linked in the description below to Amazon and Newegg will be a $1,500 version of this. How close is it? i7-7700K, 16 gigs of RAM, Z270 motherboard, GTX 1070 graphics card, liquid cooling, mid-tower case, solid state drive, two terabyte hard drive. It's almost exactly the same machine. It's not the same machine. There are differences. 
In some regards, this is a better build because it's better components. But performance-wise, this is not going to be substantially faster than what you could buy for $1,500 from CyberPower. Now, I've done extensive videos on a $720 CyberPower machine on my channel in the past. If you've been watching my channel, you've probably seen them. If you haven't, then you're new and you should be subscribed to my channel using the subscribe button. But basically, CyberPower PC is a builder of boutique computers. What does that mean? They take standard parts such as this, put the machine together, and send it to you pre-built with Windows already installed. How do they do that for basically the same price? Bulk. They get all these parts at a discount. They buy them for less than you can from Amazon or Newegg because they buy thousands of them at a time. And they use those savings for their profit margin and sell the machines for about the same price as the parts cost to you. Now, I will do a future video detailing exactly the differences between that machine and what is described here. However, if you're not up for building your own machine, you can get a great machine with basically the same level of parts for basically the same price, and that's a pretty cool option. That didn't used to be true, or at least I didn't ever find it a few years ago, but it's nice to see that you can buy a machine for about the same price that you can build one. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel using the big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section below. And as always, check out my video description. Lots and lots of links will be down there. All these individual parts will be linked to Amazon and Newegg. The CyberPower PC I mentioned will be linked to Amazon and Newegg. My video reviews of these various parts, the individual reviews will be linked down there as well. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.